So in this video I'm going to talk about my recommendations in terms of bicycle locks. So I'll be showing you my collection of bike locks and I'll also be talking about some of the experiences that I've had locking up my bike over the years. So to start things off, the number one thing that you always have to keep in mind with respect to bike locks is that there's no kind of a bike lock which is 100% steel proof. Yes, there are some bike locks which are more secure than others, but if there's a thief that really wants to steal your bike, there's always going to be some kind of a tool they're going to be able to use to be able to cut through your lock and be able to unlock it and be able to steal your bike. You kind of have to think of your bike lock as something that's really just there to buy you some extra time. Um, a higher quality lock is going to buy you more time than a lower quality lock. The flip side of that is that usually locks which are more secure um, are more solid and usually are more heavy to carry around with you. In my situation this is probably the most secure lock that I own but it's also by far the heaviest lock that I own and I definitely wouldn't want to carry this lock around with me all the time on my bike unless I was sure that I needed something this secure. Another trick that you can use to lock your bike up more securely is to use multiple locks to lock up different parts of your bike. For example, you can use a lock which goes around your back wheel and through your frame and around the bike rack, and then another lock which locks your front wheel to your frame. This means that if a thief wants to steal your bike, they're going to have to be able to penetrate two locks instead of one, so essentially you're buying yourself double the amount of time. The flip side of this, however, is that if you're using multiple locks, it's probably going to take you a fair bit longer to lock or unlock your bike. So it's great if you have a really secure bike lock system, but if it, you have to spend two or three minutes every time that you want to lock or unlock it, is it really worth having all that extra security? So as you can see with added security, there's usually some kind of a trade-off which usually comes in the form um, of added inconvenience. So I've compiled a list of questions that you can ask yourself and hopefully the answers to those questions would help you determine how secure a bike locking system you'll need for your bike. The number one question is how valuable is your bike? Is your bike something that's expensive enough that a thief would be able to steal it and be able to turn around and resell it for a, a high enough price to make it worth their while for committing that crime? If you don't have a good sense of how much your bike would be worth in the resale market, you can always take a look on your local listing service like Kijiji or Craigslist and see if you can find a bike which is similar to yours and see how much it's going for. In my city I'd say that just about any bike which is worth more than about $150 would still be likely for a bike thief to want to steal it. Another way to get a good sense of this is to take a look at all the other bikes which are locked up in the areas where you typically lock up your bike. Is your bike more expensive than the average bike which is sitting next to it? Generally, you know, the more expensive bikes that are locked up in a particular area are the more likely to get stolen. Question number two is, how common is bike theft in the areas where you typically lock up your bike? You know, some cities have a lot higher bike theft rates than others, but also within each city, there generally are areas which there's a lot more bikes stolen than other areas. Um, so it's a good idea to do some research on the areas uh, where you typically lock up your bike the most to see if there's a lot of bike theft in those areas. Also related to that are security cameras. Are there a lot of security cameras in the areas where you typically lock up your bike? Even if the security cameras weren't put there specifically for catching bike thieves, they still do a pretty good job of discouraging people from stealing bikes. So the third and final question is, how long are you typically going to be leaving your bike unattended for? Are you someone that uses your bike mostly for running errands around town? So you just you know, ride your bike to the store and then lock it up for about 10 or 15 minutes when you go inside the store and then you come right back out and use it again? Or are you someone that uses your bike for commuting to work? Uh, so you ride your bike to work and you leave it locked up outside of your workplace uh, for your full shift, for the full day. Uh, since a bike lock is really just there to buy you extra time, if you're leaving your bike unattended for a longer time, you're probably going to need a better quality lock to make sure it's going to stay safe for the entire day. In my situation, neither of the two bikes that I typically lock up around the city have very much value. When I was in university, I had a brand new mountain bike which I left locked up outside, and unfortunately it got stolen, which was really frustrating. So ever since then, I've really only ridden inexpensive bikes within the city. The location where I lock my bike up for the majority of the time is just outside of my workplace. From what I understand, bike theft is not particularly common in this part of the city. I also feel that this specific bike rack is particularly secure because it's out of sight from the main street, but it's also protected by a security camera. I feel very safe leaving my bike out here for a full 8 hour shift. 
I do also leave my bikes locked up in lots of other locations around the city in some areas which are less secure. However, I generally don't leave my bikes locked up here for as long periods of time as I do at work. So in my situation, I don't feel that I need an extremely high security bike locking system. So what I look for in a bike lock is something that can be quickly locked or unlocked but still offers a moderate level of security. So believe it or not, what I actually use the most are these black combination locks. I actually have two of them and I realize they're really not that secure and uh, you know they're pretty inexpensive locks they don't have you know the cabling's not really not that thick um, but they're really really super fast to, to put your combination in and unlock and uh, what's, what's cool about them as well is you can actually program your own combination to these ones uh, so since I have two of them I have them set for the same combination um, so it doesn't matter which lock I'm using I can always put in that same combination so for the last few years, I've probably been using my black combination locks for about 99% of the times when I've locked up my bike. But I do have a fairly extensive collection of higher security locks, which I use as well. Um, generally, these days, I really just use these locks in situations where I know I'm going to be leaving my bike locked up for an extended period of time in a fairly low security area. Uh, first, I'll talk about this one here. This is probably my most heavy-duty lock. It's a really heavy-duty chain uh, with a heavy-duty padlock on it. And uh, this is just, I bought this from the hardware store. I just bought a length of chain and I bought the padlock. And I put this old inner tube um, over the outside of it to protect the bike when I was placing over that. And I specifically bought this lock uh, for when I went to New York City. I, I spent um, a little over a week riding my bike all over New York City. And since I had heard that there's you know quite a quite a lot of bike theft in New York City, I wanted to make sure I had a really heavy duty lock that I used. Um, so I used this lock in combination with this lock here. This other cable lock, um, you know, it's a thinner piece of cable, it's longer so you can use it for more things and it has another padlock on it. Um, so I used both those locks when I was in New York City and every time I locked up my bike it took, you know, three or four minutes to do, um, but I, you know, I never had any problems with bike theft when I was in New York City. I also have this inexpensive U-lock which I actually hardly ever use. Um, I just bought it one time because I went somewhere and I realized once I got there I didn't have a bike lock so I wanted something to lock on my bike uh, so I found this inexpensively at a convenience store. Um, a lot of people will tell you that U-locks are the most secure and they probably are. Um, I just find they're, they're kind of inconvenient uh, because they kind of limit you to what you can lock to. Um, you know, with a, with a cable lock or a chain lock you can pretty much loop it around just about anything that you find in the city uh, to be able to lock up. But a U-lock, you really have to find something um, that you know has a diameter which is smaller than this, and uh, you got to be able to put your bike so it's right beside it. I also have this long cable lock which has um, you know quite thick fibers, and uh, what I really like about it is that it's really long. Um, so I use this from time to time if I have to lock up my trailer or something like that. So I also wanted to share this lock which I bought while I was visiting the Netherlands, and this style of lock is actually extremely popular over there. Uh, I travel all around the country and just about every bike that I saw um, had this style of lock on it and I think it's a really ingenious design because it makes locking up your bike um, so much faster and so much easier. Uh, basically the way that it works is this, this lock itself um, gets bolted right to the frame, that's what these holes here are for and uh, it gets bolted like to the back part of your frame where your back wheel goes um, so your back wheel actually gets inserted um, through here so your tire is here and your rim is here and uh, what, you want, what you do when you want to lock up your bike is you've got the key which is over here on this side. Uh, if you give it a little turn, it enables you to move this little tab which is down here. And as you can see this little metal ring comes and sticks out over here. And when you get to the end it clicks. And when it's clicked, then this piece is locked there like that. And you can pull the key out. But having this tab here and this thing bolted to your frame means that the spokes are here like that and you're not able to spin your wheel at all with the lock lock like that. So then when it's time to come and unlock your bike, all you've got to do is take your key, insert it into the keyhole, give it a little turn, and the bike is unlocked and ready to go. Of course, this kind of lock isn't going to prevent someone from coming along and grabbing your bike and throwing it in the back of a van and stealing it that way. Um, but if you use that lock in combination um, with more conventional locks, uh, you'll be able to have your bike locked up quite securely. So I actually bought two of these locks while I was in the Netherlands, and I've already got one of them installed here on my main commuting bike. Uh, so I'll just demonstrate how this lock works with it on the bike. So the key's over here on this side, and let me first point out that it's not actually possible to take this key out unless the lock is locked. 
Um, so that's a really good way of keeping track of your key. Um, it's basically the same as a car. Um, your car won't move unless you have a key in the ignition and you're not able to take that key out until your car is at a complete stop and in the parked position. So I just give the key a slight turn to get it started and then I can start pushing on the red handle and you see it makes a click when it gets to the end then I can pull this key out and the lock is activated. And as you can see if I try and move the bike forwards or backwards I'm not able to move it very far because the spokes are running into that metal piece right there. Even if I cut the zip ties here which are holding the lock to the frame you still wouldn't be able to steal the back wheel or be able to use the bike because this lock is locked, it's looped around the wheel itself. Um, so you wouldn't be able to take the wheel off the bike because the lock would get caught in the frame down here when you're trying to pull it out. So then when it comes time to unlock your bike, all you gotta do is retrieve your key from your pocket, insert it in here, turn it, it clicks and you're ready to go. So as I mentioned earlier, I like to combine this kind of a lock with another lock like this, which I can actually lock to the bike rack. So I'll demonstrate using those in combination. So this thing here is what we call a ring and post, and it's the most common style of bike rack in Toronto. So I pull my bike up to the bike rack like this, lean it up against the post, take my cable lock, loop it through the front wheel, and through the frame of the bike. Mess up the combination. Go to this lock, turn the key, push the red handle down, pull the key out, and quickly my bike is locked up. On this bike I actually have the deluxe model of this lock, and it has this special hole in it. Um, the other side has the key in it, but this side has this special hole. And what you can do is you can buy one of these special cables, which has this special end on it, which kind of looks like an old-fashioned headphone jack. And that gets pressed inside there, and it locks. So you have to use the key to be able to pull that out. So what you can do is, you with this cable, you can loop it around something like that, and then press it in there. And that's a way of using this lock to also lock your bike to something. Basically, it's one less step than using the method with my combination lock that I just demonstrated. So to demonstrate that, all you do is you pull your bike up to the bike rack the same way as you did it before. Take your cable lock and take the coils and divide it so that it's about in half. Tuck that front piece through your front wheel, like so, and loop the whole cable all the way back. Tuck the end through the loop, and that end gets plugged in there. Turn the key, press the red tab down, and pull your key out and your bike is securely locked. When it comes time to unlock your bike, all you've got to do is turn the key, the red tab flips up, turn it again, pull this tab out, pull the cable so that it comes out of your front wheel, like so. The bike's unlocked and ready to go. Regardless of what type of lock you choose, it's still always a good idea to make sure you have a record of what the serial number of the bike is in case it does get stolen. A lot of police departments will allow you to register the serial number of your bike with them because they actually retrieve quite a lot of stolen bikes every year. So if they have your serial number connected with a name and address, then it makes it a lot easier for them to trace the bike back to you. The serial number of a bike can be located on a few different locations. On this bike it's written down here, below the bottom bracket, which is probably the most common location for a serial number to be. However, on my road bike the serial number is embedded into the frame here, on the seat tube. On my green bike the serial number is located on this metal plate back here where the rack attaches. On another note, if you have the choice, I recommend staying away from bikes that have lots of quick release parts because that means that it's that much easier for someone to be able to take those parts off your bike and steal them. Now I realize that it really doesn't take very much for someone to grab a wrench and be able to loosen off the bolts and be able to steal something even if it doesn't have a quick release. However, by doing that, you still are limiting the theft of that bike part to somebody that has a wrench with them. So that concludes my video guide to bicycle locks. As you can see, there are many different styles of bike locks out on the market, and hopefully this video has helped you determine what type of lock is right for you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.